My brother said, Simone, be careful because see somebody on the veranda. The rain started pouring down now, so. We were running out the rain. I was in front. Eh? Simone was in front of me. And I hear gunshot, gunshot ringing out. And, and I see like fire. The gunman shot me in the belly. I want them to run. So I said, murder, run! Right there and then I realized it's something really bad. Gun man, gun man. Them shot me again for my shut up. I don't hear someone and I see my brother running. We know it was because we were gay. When I get up to run out, the boy said, the body man get away, but the lesbian dead. My name is Maurice Tomlinson and I'm a senior policy analyst with the Canadian HIV and AIDS Legal Network. I'm also a Jamaican lawyer and I work specifically challenging homophobia and HIV in the Caribbean. I go to Jamaica from time to time to do cases and I literally just came straight from Jamaica where I was in a case as the applicant challenging the laws of Belize and Trinidad and Tobago which banned the entry of homosexuals. Homophobia in Jamaica has a l history, I would say, which can be dated to about the late 70s, um, early 80s. That was about the time we had the import of religious evangelicals from North America. They had lost the culture wars in the global north, so they started coming to Jamaica, first via televangelism and then in person. And uh, they preached this toxic hate for gays. And this was very popular and it spawned a lot of replicas in Jamaica. A lot of pastors started doing the same thing because it would be a draw. And the result was that our musicians started to perform a lot of anti-gay songs because most of our musicians grew up in church. They were either part of the choir, etc., etc. So they started performing these anti-gay songs and it served a, um, a very critical purpose, which is to marinate the society in hate. Bye bye. A man was killed after a heated argument with men who labeled him as homosexual. The gruesome killing of 16-year-old Shane Gordon as well as the injuring of his mother. The bodies of two men who were believed to have been homosexuals were found in an open lot. On the Abominable Crime is a wonderful film which gives a different spin on the homophobia in Jamaica. Generally, people focus on the attacks against nameless persons. This film, The Abominable Crime, focuses on the attacks on two particular individuals, myself as an activist and Simone as a mother lesbian. So it chronicles the film, The Abominable Crime, chronicles our journeys, our different journeys. Um, different classes, different sexes, different um, you know, orientations, etc. And how we have been able to make a life despite the very traumatic um, circumstances that we've found ourselves in. I would say that although in Jamaica, since the film came out, the politicians have begun to say some more tolerant things, the law is still on the books, which criminalizes same-gender intimacy with up to 10 years in prison. The churches have ramped up the anti-gay rhetoric to the point where we've begun to see the largest anti-gay demonstrations in the island's history. Last year, we had a demonstration of 25,000 people in the square, and these have now been taken around the island. So the religion is being used to once again target gays in the same way it was done in the late 70s, early 80s. Because I think what's happening is that they're seeing the tide changing in the global north and they fear that this is going to happen in Jamaica.
Visibility is definitely important to liberation because the fear that people have about homosexuals is driven by lack of knowledge. They really think we are monsters and pedophiles. And until they get to know us that we're their sons, their daughters, their lawyers, their doctors, they will not stop hating us. I was very fortunate to be the Grand Marshal for the first Uganda Pride. Um, and this was because I was the David Cato Vision and Voice Award winner. And that really gave me a lot of hope for my own country because even in the face of such horrendous persecution, these activists were willing to risk everything and be visible, you know? And the police came, they arrested us, and we still were able to make our statement that we are here, we're not going anywhere. And I was so incredibly moved. And I want to see that happen in Jamaica. I want to see us march down the streets of Kingston or Montego Bay and just say, look, we're here. We're not a threat. We are you. We, are, we, are, we want to be recognized for our humanity. And in all our fabulous flamboyance, um, I would really want to see that happening in Jamaica. And I think we will get there because Jamaicans love a good party. And we love um, laughter. We love celebration. And uh, there's something to be said about a gay parade. It's just the most happy, fun event you can participate in. And I think we will get there in Jamaica.